It means that even if he ends up paying £300 million, the BHS pensioners will not get that money. And he says this is a better outcome for them. So he thinks the regulator has got some questions to answer. And there's no doubt that in this politically febrile environment, the pensions regulator, who is due to go in to see the select committees who conducted these sessions, felt under some political pressure to look to act tough. Whether they get the most effective outcome for BHS pensioners remains to be seen. And just that idea, this word structures, he's offered, the concern is over the structures he'd offered. What's, what is that talking about? What, what it's talking mean? about is, for, for example, giving, there are some people who've got very small pension pots coming to them or very small payments coming to them rather than have those drag on for years go and offer them a small lump sum now call each member of the fund and say would you take this it's been done a couple of times before the, the kodak um, had a scheme like this and that worked you know, pretty successfully what the pensions regulator is saying is we don't like the look of this structure we don't think it's sustainable we don't think it's credible um, so Philip Green disagrees and by the way on in his statement last night he said I think that I've done what I, was, I promised to do to the select committee that looks ominously like that was my final offer Simon thank you very much well sitting alongside Simon is Steve Webb who uh, is former Minister of State for Pensions, in fact was Minister uh, in, during the time of the Coalition, so when all this was going on. Um, good morning. Good morning. Uh, first, what do you make of that? What do you think should be happening here? Is there a danger that the best deal is going to slip away? I think the problem with Philip Green is that he's kept making promises and not delivered, and the regulator has finally lost patience. So this has been going on for months, and the regulator has finally said, what you've offered us is just not, it's just too slippery, I think is the word. So, for example, we, we haven't seen it, but if it's based on assumptions about how the future will turn out, that turn out not to happen, the last thing anybody wants is to have to go through all of this again. I think what the regulator is trying to do is get a deal that will be signed and, and deal with this issue once and for all. Okay, but in, in trying to establish that certain we're entering a process which we know from experience takes years. But that was always, I think, going to be the case. But what's interesting is there are two things the regulator's done. One is a thing called a contribution notice, which is basically a bill. It says, we want this amount of money. But the other thing is something called a financial support and, directive. Sorry, just, yeah. is it your understanding at 300 million? Off, uh, off we, have, we haven't seen the figures, but okay. it would be of that order, you would imagine. Um, but the other one would be more of an ongoing commitment. It would say, look, a lot of these pensions won't have to be paid until 10, 20, 30 years down the track. So rather than asking for a huge cash amount up, sub, up front, some commitment, some binding commitment to pay the pensions as they fall due. And that might be more credible than just a huge payment right up front. When did you, as Minister, first know of a problem with the pension fund at BHS? Well, the BHS pension fund itself, like many others in British industry, had a deficit that was growing for years, and in that sense it didn't stand out. When we knew there was a particular problem,